you remember the story of the prodigal son? Where a son talked his dad into giving him his inheritance early and then he went off and partied and lost all his money, ending up broke and hungry and he ended up eating the food that pigs were eating and feeding pigs just to survive. But one day decided to return home, throw himself on his father's mercy and hoped to just become a hired servant. Luke, in Luke 15, it says how his father responded. And it says, so he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. If you haven't read the story in a while, check out Luke 15. It's a good one to reread. Um, but I've been reading this book called Life Is by Judah Smith. And he talks a little bit about the story and I'm going to share with you what he wrote. And it says, I can only imagine what the boy smelled and looked like. He'd been hanging out at a pig farm after all. Have you ever ha been to a pig farm? I've driven by one and that's enough for me. The aroma itself was too much information, but his dad didn't care. He hugged him, kissed him and brought him into his house. That's hard for me to picture. I can't stand stains on my clothes. I can't handle the thought of germs. I can't deal with things being out of order. So if my children try and hug me, but they have dirty hands and faces, I will stiff arm them. I don't think about it and I can't help myself. I just do it. It's a self-defense mechanism. All I can think about when I see them is where those little hands have been and what might be on them and what it's going to look like all over my white shirt. They're welcome to clean up, wash up, and dry off. Then, and only then, can they approach me. Sorry, kids. I'll pay for your psychiatrist someday. My response is the polar opposite of the father of this parable, who of course represents God. God knows exactly where we've been and what's all over us. He sees the dirt and grime before we do, and he embraces us anyways. He restores us anyway. Thinking about God's view of us as if we were kids who just came inside after taking mud baths is such a cool image to me. We're so dirty and sin covered and God doesn't even bat an eye at that. He willingly takes us right into his open arms where he's been waiting. Shame is not a fun feeling, especially when it's something that you wish you could turn back the clock on and just pretend never happened. It's definitely hard to confess those things and own up to them. And processing these feelings is hard too. Shame can really tear you up inside and that is not fun whatsoever. But it's helpful to know that as sinful as we are, even when we're trying not to be, God is still going to continue loving on us. His love isn't something that runs out. I often struggle with holding up what I feel like is my end of a relationship with Jesus and giving him the quality time that he deserves. Uh, but he knows my struggles and still loves me through them. And that makes me just want to try harder. I'm sure that ideally God would love for all of us to just stop sinning and messing up over and over again. But he knows us even better than we do. He knows that try as we might, we're going to sin. It's human nature. However, God is gracious. There's a built-in catch-all, and it's because of that that we don't need to fear the future. God's love and forgiveness is boundless and so, so amazing. Remember that as you're going through this week, um, that even though you're going to sin, you're going to mess up, God still loves you. Even if we try, even though we try our hardest, it happens. And don't feel that shame because of that. Because even though we are dirty and gross and covered in this mess of sin, God is still going to open up his arms to us and love us and forgive us if we come to him.